Mark Manavani, thank you so much for being here with us today. Happy to be with you, Lauren. So, you, of course, you're a local businessman, no stranger to the political scene, but in the past you've run as a Democrat. So let's get that question right off the bat here. Why now? Why in the heck are you running as a Republican? Well, there's a strange set of circumstances in the Republican Party, obviously. And uh, as you know, I've run as a Democrat twice before. And uh, uh, in, in both of those cases, I uh, solicited Republican voters to cross the aisle and to vote for me, though I was running as a Democrat. And I think there's a recognition of the fact that this particular office, especially, is one that uh, is probably less dependent on political ideology and more dependent on uh, effectiveness from an administrative executive uh, s sort of uh, standpoint and uh, so when uh, Ms. Pinner withdrew and uh, the Republicans asked me if this would be something I would uh, consider we we talked about it and uh, 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 I agreed to do it my my objective has always been uh, uh, serving St. Louis I uh, my priority here is St. Louis, and it always was. It, it was never a political uh, party or uh, ideology. I just want to help St. Louis uh, achieve its potential and get back to the point where we've restored its 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 prominence and we've addressed its fundamental challenges. And I I feel like uh, I can do that in the office, uh, regardless of whether I've gotten there uh, from a Republican or a Democratic. Uh, uh, base. I think of the term rhino, which has taken on sort of its own ideology, but d are you a Republican in name only for this ballot, or would you consider yourself a Republican or a Democrat? You know, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm clearly running as a Republican, so I, I guess the uh, de facto I'm uh, considered a Republican uh, today. I don't agree with uh, everything that either party uh, says, never did, and uh, and and so uh, I, you know I'm, I'm running as a Republican. My ideas haven't changed. My my values haven't changed. Uh, I think that uh, political parties should aspire to having big tents and having people with disparate views in their tents. And so uh, beyond that, I I sort of don't put a lot of credence in any of the labels. As the voters kind of get to know you, um, I think some might say, do you align yourself with Republican values with Democrat values? So can we kind of do a little bit of a lightning round here? When it comes to Roe v. Wade, the Supreme Court's decision, your thoughts there? Yeah. So, uh, look, I'm a uh, I'm a, a big advocate, always have been, of, for women's reproductive uh, health uh, and and rights. Uh, my uh, we have three children. My wife uh, almost died in childbirth uh, three times. Uh, I have daughters, and uh, my my views have been that uh, that those kinds of issues should be uh, left to a uh, a woman and her doctor, and uh, they haven't uh, they haven't changed. When it comes to voter integrity, the former president Donald Trump, of course, has cast some dispersions about that. Do you think that there are free and fair elections, particularly in St. Louis County? Yeah, I have I have pretty high confidence in the election process in St. Louis County. You know, before Lauren and I ran in 2018, I uh, spent a day really down at the county elections board uh, to try to uh, familiarize myself with. How that worked and 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 the, and the like. The uh, you know there, there's great effort to have representation from both political parties in every phase of that process. Uh, uh, Eric Fay and Rick Stream, uh, who lead the uh, uh, the the Democratic and Republican uh, teams there, I think are both people of very high integrity. Uh, I I I have a lot of confidence. You know, back a few years ago. Uh, I thought the technology was lacking a little bit. Uh, when I went through there in 2018, they were still using floppy disks, if you can imagine, and uh, and uh, they had sought to upgrade their systems, which have, has been done now. So, I have uh, I have a high level of, of confidence in uh, in in the. Uh, uh, fairness of uh, county elections. And we'll talk more about local crime, but when it comes to access to weapons, are you in favor or against restricting some access? Well, look, I think we have too many handguns in uh, in wrong hands uh, uh, in in this day and age. I mean, I think the, the 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 crime and the violence that we see in in this region are uh, uh, certainly. Uh, 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 made much worse because of the uh, amount of guns that are uh, that are out there and so I think there are legitimate efforts that a local government can uh, go to to uh, gun buybacks and the, and the like to try to get uh, the the uh, plethora of guns off the street and I think we should 
And, and lastly, sort of on that vein, will you be supporting other Republican candidates? The Attorney General, for example, will you be voting yeah. against him up yeah. down on the yeah. Republican ticket? As I, as I said, I, uh, when the Republicans asked me to do this, uh, we agreed that in the eight weeks that I had to try to build the whole campaign from scratch, that my priority was going to be this campaign, and I've uh, stayed out of all of the others. And, uh, and, and, and look, the, the bottom line, Lauren, here is that the St. Louis community has fundamental challenges that nobody's been dealing with effectively, in my opinion. And we have got to uh, come together as a, as a region in order to address these common issues, crime being probably the, the, uh, the, the worst of those challenges. Uh, and so, uh, you know, my, my objective here is to bring people together, right, and not to uh, engage in uh, divisive uh, sorts of strategies and whatnot. And, uh, and, and uh, when I accepted the nomination, the Republicans said they understood that, and, uh, and uh, everybody's been true to that word. And so I'm, I'm not getting involved in other elections. I'm just trying to get myself elected county executive, and that's a big enough job for me. Should you be elected, what would be sort of the first step you'd like to take? What's priority number one? Well, regionally, the crime issue is the, is the top one. Uh, before I talk about that, I, I want to acknowledge that I, I think that uh, the first job of the county executive is to make certain that they're providing, he or she is providing effective leadership for the roughly 4,000 employees in St. Louis County. You know, uh, people that I know who work in St. Louis County government uh, uh, repeatedly tell me that they feel there's been no leadership over candidly the last couple of county executives so far as the rank and file, the co-workers to the county executive and anybody who's ever been a CEO would tell you that your first priority has to be to make certain that you set a vision and you communicate with your co-workers that you make certain people are in alignment and and so uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to walk the halls and uh, uh, make certain that the people who are working for county government in the, in the uh, full myriad of divisions that there are, have what they need to have uh, uh, to do their job effectively, all right? And, uh, and so that's a priority. From, a, from an issue standpoint, crime is the, uh, is the one that undermines our uh, community uh, the most. Uh, we have got to develop a crime plan that is uh, supported across the, the region. A crime plan is not something that the county executive can do on a top-down basis because it involves constituencies across the region. I would uh, uh, want to engage with the police, uh, uh, you know, who have endorsed me, and so I've got a pretty good working relationship uh, there already, but with the prosecutor and with the, uh, uh, with the feds and uh, with uh, people in the community, the neighborhoods, clergy, and the like, and business interests, uh, those are some of the key constituencies to developing an effective community crime plan. In St. Louis, there seems to be this sort of confusion about the fact that a crime plan is somehow or other rare or controversial. You know, if, if you Google the terms crime plan, you'll find that most major metropolitan areas across the country have crime plans that they're working. What's preposterous is that uh, with the uh, uh, incredible growth in violent crime over the last uh, five years in uh, St. Louis County, there's no plan. There's, there's no concept of a plan, and I think it is uh, probably the county executive's greatest failure that he has sat uh, by on his hands and not created a viable crime plan to, to address this. The, uh, uh, the, the crime issue is, is, is so crucial uh, in our community, not merely because of its uh, impact on the victims of crime, but it undermines our progress as a region uh, as well. People are leaving St. Louis County for other parts within the region. People are leaving the region altogether. Businesses don't want to invest here because of their fear about crime. Businesses are relocating because of their crime issue. So the crime issue has this uh, significant uh, number of consequences because of it. And so, uh, you know, uh, we, we have got to tackle it. Nobody's going to make the crime problem go away overnight, but that is no excuse for not being engaged. And uh, and uh, uh, Sam Page is just not engaged on the issue. It's that simple. Are there specific things you think? Is it more uniform police officers, prevention? Wh where do you think it needs well, to go first? So uh, a strategy has to be uh, uh, devised uh, that does three things. Uh, you have to have a long-term uh, crime plan. You know, uh, criminal conduct is uh, at its root cause a function of uh, uh, desperation and, and, and poverty and the like. And so those people who say we have to deal with those kinds of issues are correct. We do. You have to have a long-term plan to 
mitigate the, the, the kind of desperation that comes from a lack of economic mobility within a community. Uh, and you have to have an intermediate set of activities where you're creating uh, youth centers and, uh, and mentorship programs and, uh, and after school programs and like for, for, uh, for, for youth as well. Uh, that's an intermediate step, right? But you also have to engage immediately to get bad actors uh, uh, in, a, in a situation where they're not acting out uh, anymore. And that's where we have been totally unengaged, in, in my opinion. So, yeah, we have, to, we have to engage with the police along those lines. I would cite to you uh, uh, the, the Boston plan as a great example. Uh, Boston, around 2000, 2001, published a plan called uh, Operation Ceasefire, which was a consortium across the community of people who were committed to trying to give bad actors a choice about how they wanted their life to proceed. They would give them job training, they would find them jobs if they committed to avoiding uh, uh, lives of crime. And if they didn't, then they were committed to having those people removed from, from the streets. Uh, Community-wide program, a lot of constituents, a lot of engagement, uh, so it involves uh, uh, supporting the police for certain, uh, but uh, working with the prosecutors and the business community and the clergy and across the whole community. That's, what, that's, that's the kind of crime plan that I look forward to uh, bringing forth. Quite a bit of change in the leadership in the police department over the last several years. Do you, would you have a person in mind? Would you want to start a search there for a new police chief? Well, look, it's it's not uh, directly up to me. I think that uh, I, I think that uh, the police department uh, in St. Louis County uh, has done its best uh, to deal uh, with the challenges that it has. Policing all across America, you know, is uh, 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 struggling today with the number of police, uh, with the disrespect that police are shown, and the lack of trust that they have in different communities. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I'd. I'd uh, I I'd certainly would engage on, on the issue of whether or not we've got the right uh, uh, chief. I, I expect that Chief Gregory is not going to be a long-term uh, player, and uh, I think there are probably uh, good candidates on the force. Uh, we may have to go outside as well. So, uh, yeah, I would, uh, I would certainly engage on the, uh, on, on the matter. But the latest COVID. not appropriate for me to finger a point to a particular candidate, obviously. Yeah. Have to get the seat first would be the first exactly, step. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of talk right now, new headlines about a new COVID variant. What specifically about the county executive's handling of the pandemic would you have done differently? And would you be in favor if, of lockdowns, mask mandates, if necessary? Yeah, so uh, I have said before, I would never say never about uh, extraordinary efforts. Uh, I don't know what's uh, coming around the next bend in the road any more than anybody else does. So I would never uh, eliminate uh, options. But it would take a pretty extraordinary set of circumstances for uh, me to behave as uh, the county executive did. Uh, my uh, criticism of the county executive is primarily a function of the way he went about his job, right? Uh, he, he was uh, dictatorial uh, as opposed to being collaborative. And that's the kind of leadership style that just doesn't work in 21st century America, right? Uh, if you're going to make a decision that uh, eliminates people's livelihoods, I think you have an obligation to communicate with those people, to sit down with them, to see if there are other alternatives uh, and the like. My opinion is that the county executive treated a variety of different constituencies uh, disrespectfully uh, uh, with the way he, he dictated. Uh, uh, I, think he, I think he was disrespectful to uh, restaurant owners and bar owners and gym owners, and I think he was disrespectful to parents and, 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 uh, and, and people who were running uh, uh, athletic programs. I think he was disrespectful to uh, school boards, uh, to the municipalities. Uh, what he didn't do, Lauren, was he didn't collaborate. Okay, he didn't collaborate. He didn't. Uh, he he didn't search for new ideas. He didn't. Uh, he didn't communicate effectively with those people that were most uh, impacted. And uh, and uh, and as a practical matter, despite all of the restrictions, the statistics with respect to performance were not very good. I mean. Uh, uh, on a rate of death per 100,000, uh, St. Louis City had a lower uh, 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 rate of death. The state of Missouri had a lower rate of death. And so despite all the restrictions in St. Louis County and all the consternation, and all the ill will and all the disrespect, the outcome still wasn't very effective.
So what? Uh, how how would you have done that differently? Then well, bringing I would have, those stakeholders uh, to the table. Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, uh, I would have I would have engaged with uh, those business owners and 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 asked them what other kinds of alternatives there might have been, rather than just shutting them down and uh, and and putting them out of business. I would have I would have uh, communicated with the municipalities to see what uh, what their issues were in their various locations. Uh, this tends to be very much a uh, uh, a tendency that the county executive has. He, uh, he doesn't engage. He doesn't engage with the county council. He dictates to people. Uh, and uh, and uh, in, in my view, uh, uh, the chief executive of a significant enterprise has the obligation to communicate, uh, to engage, to collaborate uh, in, in the best interests of, uh, of the enterprise. And I just don't think he did that. When it comes to both crime and public health, how do you think you'd be able to work with other regional leaders, whether it's St. Charles County or Mayor Jones, for example, in the city? How would you work yeah, with so, them? Yeah, uh, so, you know, I, I uh, like and respect uh, all of those uh, people. I think that, uh, uh, I, I, I think that uh, you, you have the obligation to, uh, to, to, to work with those uh, folks. Uh, I think I'd work well. Uh, you know, I, I tell people uh, frequently, it catches people off guard sometimes, but. Uh, Mayor Jones is probably the best informed uh, leader uh, in our region when it comes to innovation and creative solutions to local government across the country. I have great respect uh, for her uh, familiarity with what's happening across the country. Uh, uh, Steve Ailman does a, 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 a wonderful job uh, in, in St. Charles and I, I welcome uh, having conversations uh, with those guys. I thought it was a preposterous set of circumstances, candidly when you could go to a restaurant in the city of St. Louis on one side of the street, but you couldn't go to a restaurant on the other side of the street in St. Louis County. Uh, I think that showed uh, a lack of uh, leadership. I think it's incumbent on the county executive. Look, St. Louis County is the economic engine for the, for the region. It's got the largest population. It's got the largest GDP. It's, it's, it really requires a leader who's going to be effective in reaching out to folks uh, and uh, making certain that uh, however we proceed, we're, we're working together on that. I, I again, think uh, that was an effort that was not done. The Democratic challenger, though, in the primary d didn't get there. Um, why do you think, what will be the difference maker for you to, to be essentially the incumbent, Sam Page? Uh, I think we've got a tremendous opportunity. Uh, I mean, the, there's, a, there's a significant base of Republican voters. If you go back and look at prior uh, elections, you'll find a significant uh, uh, base of, uh, of uh, 40 percent or so of St. Louis County historically votes uh, Republican. Uh, if you look at my uh, uh, track record in the uh, previous Democratic primaries uh, in 2018, I got 50 percent of the Democratic vote. Uh, in uh, 2020, I got 30 percent of the Democratic vote in a four-person field. I think there are enough Democrats who uh, uh, share my sense of disappointment uh, with regard to the trajectory of the region and the leadership that we're uh, seeing, and uh, I, I think we're going to be right there. And speaking of that, there have been some high-profile indictments, including a former opponent of yours, uh, Steve Stanger, um, a public official in the San Page administration has been indicted, as well as in the city. Does there need to be some restoration of public trust in well, local government? Yeah, of course there does. And uh, I mean, I, I, I think that uh, with respect to uh, uh, County Executive Page, uh, look, he may be a very fine guy and a very fine doctor. It's, it's clear to me that he lacks the skills to be a chief executive officer. His hiring practices uh, have been shown to leave a lot to be desired. Uh, I mean, he, he's had a revolving door. He's had people indicted. He's had uh, 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 people leave for the uh, most unimaginable sets of circumstances. Uh, uh, hiring is a pretty darn important job when you're the chief executive, you know? And uh, I, I think that he has had a tendency to put in place political appointees as opposed to people who are pre credentialed in a given uh, space uh, and uh, that's just not the way I would uh, I would go about uh, doing the job so uh, people in the uh, in the region I think want a county government that uh, that works that uh, that isn't chaotic that isn't dysfunctional that has quality people working in it, uh, it the, I think people want uh, accountability and transparency. You hear these things all the time from people running for office, you know. Uh, the thing that's a little bit different about me is I'm not running for this office because I want to run for something else. Uh, I'll tell the people the truth even if it suggests that we screwed up because we're sort of all in this together and I'm not trying to build a resume to go run for another office, right? So 
I think I'm unburdened by some of the traditional uh, 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 burdens that uh, politicians have. And uh, as I said, all, all I want to do is uh, help, the, help the region get better. Would you say key to winning, though, is, is for Democrats who voted for you before? They got to they got to cross ticket. This yeah, time. no, that's key. That's, that's crucial for sure. I mean, it's clearly the uh, uh, Republican Party is clearly a minority party in St. Louis County. Uh, I mean, we, uh, we're uh, we're uh, hoping that uh, a large number of those uh, Democrats who uh, appreciated my message in prior years will stick with us because it's the same message. It's it's a message of. Uh, let's focus on St. Louis County and making it uh, uh, better so that our, our children don't leave and, uh, uh, and uh, so that we can build a, a growing economy, which uh, candidly we, we just haven't been doing enough of. And just to kind of hit it one more time, why not jump in then during the Democratic primary? Why not try again as a Democrat? Yeah, well, uh, I mean, the, the fact of the matter is that isn't that sort of the definition of insanity, Lauren, when you keep doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different outcome? Uh, isn't know, that somewhat you know, what you're doing, though, now? No, not You're at running all. A, it's different, you say. Very different. Yeah, it's, it's very different because, uh, because uh, uh, by definition, uh, 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 people from across the aisle have asked me to, uh, 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 to, to do this. And, uh, and, and so I think, I think it's quite a different scenario. I mean, it, and, and even politically, you know, I was never in the general election before. So uh, those were only primary campaigns, right? And so by definition, it's quite different. You know? Final pitch to voters. What do you want them to know about you? Well, I think what I want voters to know about me is that uh, if they care about St. Louis uh, in, a, in a meaningful way, that uh, I share that, that, uh, that my opinion about uh, our leadership in uh, St. Louis and St. Louis County spe uh, especially uh, over these last many years has been that it has been substandard and that by virtue of that substandard leadership we've watched communities across the midwest pass us by uh, uh, the nashvilles and indianapolises and, and increasingly kansas cities of uh, this world and i think it doesn't have to be that way i think we've had no uh, we've had no outspoken leader uh, for the region uh, for for many years, uh, nobody who's gone to bat for the region, who's communicated internally about what a great place this is, and on a broader uh, landscape uh, as well. I think I bring those skills. I think I bring the skills of uh, somebody who's been a true uh, proven executive. You know, I, I've run uh, hundred million dollar budgets. Uh, I've uh, uh, I've led hundreds of employees. Uh, this is not an on the job training job for a guy with uh, my skill and. And, and I think we just haven't had that skill represented in the county executive's uh, office. And so I, I would look forward to setting a different uh, uh, trajectory for the region, addressing our fundamental challenges like crime and lack of economic development uh, so that our children and grandchildren uh, uh, feel that this is a place they want to be longer term. And you're asking Republicans and Democrats to vote November 8th. I surely am. I surely am. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, Lauren. Thanks for having me. Good to be with you.